guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording Monday, May 13th, after Celtics Cavs game four. Celtics win 109. 102, seven point win, their lowest margin of victory of the postseason, but a win is a win, as they say. Celtics pull it out. No Donovan Mitchell, no Jared Allen Cavs uh, tested the Celtics because what else would happen? Of course, it's the way it works. Uh, <laughs> Celtics brought home the victory, though. Um, Jason Tatum, 33, 11, and 5. Jalen Brown, 27, and 8. Drew Holiday, another big game, uh, 16 points on 4 of 8 from 3. P- Pritchard made three threes as well. Meanwhile, Garland exploded for 30 points, 12 of 27, and 4, 13 from 3. Uh, Max Struess gave him five threes as well, much to Sam Chagrin. Karis Levert also had 19. Evan Mobley, 19 as well. Celtics brought home the win, but it wasn't without the stress, Sam. Yeah, this was the ultimate Sam wrote the script game. Uh, two, two of the Celtics blog articles I did about this series were Max Struess and Levert. Oh my God, I can't believe the Celtics had to fucking play these guys again. And they combined for 34 points. And then I wrote the one that went up this morning about Pritchard having brass balls. And he had one of the most impressive stretches in this game. Probably eclipsed by the holiday stretch in the fourth quarter. But end of the third quarter, makes a couple free throws, six step back three. Brings the lead back to 10 before the final horn. Um, overall, this was a really weird game. It was a roller coaster game. I was saying to my dad before Jack and I started recording here, I feel like the Celtics played some of their best basketball in the playoffs. Certain stretches of this game. Certain stretches of this game, I wanted to put my head in the microwave and then when I was done, go dive off my deck. Uh just very polarizing Celtics game. I thought they started really, really well after they gave up the initial eight to two stretch from Cleveland punched back with a crisp 19 to two run championship esque response gets the second quarter. And they're just like, ah, we're not going to close the door on this one. No, no. And they go into the half only up five Cleveland cut it to one. Then they come out of the half, like even worse. They're like Tatum's free turnover. And then Mobley dunks it. And I was like, maybe they're going to lose this game. Maybe they're going to lose it. Uh, Mention the Pritchard stretch at the end of the quarter. Mention the Drew stretch at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Jalen had a a decent start to the fourth, too. He put them up 15, and then they went five minutes. Five minutes without a field goal. Not Mm. what you want to see in this game. But they did it. They won their first clutch game of the season. Uh, After those five minutes, Tatum comes off a nice screen, hits Jalen for an open three, sends LeBron. Hacking sent them home. Yeah, I thought the Celtics were shit. <laughs> I, thought, I thought they were really bad. I, I don't think they were good at all. Uh, they had like stretches, like you mentioned, like after Joe called that first time out. But I thought this yeah. was a really bad game. And the fact that they wanted it anyways is obviously a good thing. But I thought the offense looked horrible. Um, <clears throat> they had 38 field goals and only 15 assists. They only took 78 shots and 32 threes. Cavs took 16 more shots and 16 more threes than them. You shouldn't win that game. They did a good job of being aggressive. They got to the line 24 times, made 21 of them. So, like, that's huge. It's the only reason they won the game, and, and I credit them for that. They had some big offensive rebounds. They had 10. Uh, that was good as well. But they also turned the ball over 14 times, and they weren't just, like, normal turnovers. Like, they handed the ball to the Cavs. Like, mm-hmm. They were terrible turnovers. Joe Missoula, after the game, had a quote, and everyone, like, laughed at him. But he was like, no, I'm fucking serious. And so Adam Himmelsbach <clears throat> asked Joe Missoula, so you just cleaned up the turnovers in the second half. What was the key to that? And he said, <laughs> I transcribed it. He said, just passing the guys uh, to the guys with the green jerseys. That's poise. That's the most poise you can have. And then Adam Ozak is like following up. and He goes, literally, just pass. <laughs> and uh, Adam's like, so that's what you said? That we're not poised if we're not passing to each other? And Joe goes, yes. And like the balls are getting deflected and thrown out of bounds and just like pass. It's that simple. I'm being dead serious. Just stay spaced, make the right pass. I know. I'm sorry. I'm not coming off that way, but I'm being serious. Like he was just so serious. Like just fucking pass the ball to the people in the green jerseys. And the Celtics didn't do that. There were offensive foul turnovers. They were literally passing it out of bounds. Turnovers. Pritchard dribbled it off his foot one time. Like they, they were just playing sloppy basketball and gave the Cavs a window to get in this game. I thought the defense was rough at times. I don't think they closed out on Max Strews quick enough in transition. Joe had two fucking angry timeouts where Max Struess just waltzed into a transition three and he had to call a timeout and he was getting pissed. They give up two to Sam Merrill that were butt naked wide open in the first half. Um, 
Darius Garland got a, two, uh, a couple that were way too easy off the pick and roll. Drop coverage looked really bad in this game, and they're still going to it. Don't know why the fuck they're not playing Tillman. Bobby Manning tried to ask about it before the game, and Joe just like denied him. He like asked the question. Joe just goes, what was your question? And he goes, like something about like to get Al rest and Joe goes Al's fine and that's it it was period at the end of the question there's no are you watching um, the same games that we're watching dude, I don't think it is fine. I I think I you credit the Celtics for how they were aggressive and they overcame the Cavs defensive adjustments to basically take the three-point game out of the equation Celtics made fucking 12 threes in this game that's got to be like top five fewest they've made in the game all season um but I credit the Celtics for staying aggressive and finding ways around that of scoring um, I thought Jason Tatum was pretty good, uh, not from the three, but from inside the arc. I thought Jalen Brown did a good job of that as well. Same thing with Drew Holiday. Um, but the Celt- Celtics made 38 shots in this game. You don't win many of those games. Like uh, Credit to them for winning it, but I thought they looked like shit. Can't wait for the box score Twitter people to get their hands on this and be like, Adam Silver put in the call, 24 free throws for the Celtics, just seven for Cleveland. They, they earned them. They earned them. They were the more aggressive team. This, they this, were. this is the reason that teams sh- usually shoot more free throws than the Celtics and the Warriors. Like the Warriors don't take any free throws, like the the, the Dynasty Warriors, because they took so many yes. threes. That's what the Cavs did tonight. And the Celtics said, "Okay, you're gonna take away three. We're gonna be aggressive and get inside." And they they did that. And Max Struess is the most fucking dumb complainer I've ever seen. He's he'll, Max he'll, he'll he'll take a he'll fucking castrate Jalen Brown and they go, "What do you mean? I didn't do anything." Like, come on, they're like give me a break. LeBron must have been impressed. Like Max Struess was palms up in front of the palms up goat. That that is history that you got to see with your own eyes today. Uh, to go back to Max Struess, I did tweet out the King Rat picture when we went to Vegas and they had the Christmas setup with the rat in the crown. So there's a little Max Struess love. Um, Tatum, really good Tatum game. I thought I thought Tatum had great stretches in this game. He came out, set the tone after. Cleveland goes up when Cleveland got close. I think it was the second quarter. Maybe it was in the third. Trying to think it was the second Mm. because they were shooting uh, on the right side of the screen. Mm. He has two great pick and rolls with Luke. Mm. Yeah. And it was like Cleveland had just cut it to one Tatum takes control of the game and he does it without taking difficult shots or shots at all. He just made the right read. He put pressure on the defense. They crushed. They they wilted, and they gave Luke an open dunk twice. I was just so happy with with the decision making from him throughout this game. There were a couple iffy. There was one where it was the fourth quarter, I think, and maybe it was the third. And he was uh, at the nail, and it was one of those I am shooting this no matter what possessions from Tatum but besides that I really thought he was pretty good in this game I know he had four turnovers uh, a couple of them were early yeah. and there yeah. was the one out of the break but overall and, th- these two games have been a great like hey look at me response from Tatum and for what it's worth Tatum made two big shots at the start of the fourth quarter too two tough middies like the, the ones he wasn't yes. making yesterday in the fourth he made a couple of those so two I, I, thought I that mean was good. business shots from Tatum mm-hmm. and the play you mentioned that sent LeBron home was what they should have been doing the whole fucking game. Like, like that, that was, that's all you need to do. Like, why aren't we parlaying our aggressiveness into open threes? And, and, and I get, and I don't want this to sound, cause I do think there's a balance, like credit the Cavs. The Cavs have done a good job of taking the three pointer away. And, and you can't just say, just do that because the Cavs have made it their point to take that away. And I think the Celtics can work harder and have the ability to get back to playing the offense that get them threes. But you have to also acknowledge that the Cavs are actively trying to take that away. And so, I think if the Celtics worked a little harder, they should be able to get to more of those those driving kick threes, like the driving kick game. I, I tweeted, <laughs> I tweeted. Um, <clears throat> let me find it here. Uh, midway through the game, I tweeted about the offense. I said Celtics offense looked really rough. The last two games, yeah. way too much Mitch match hunting, not enough ball movement slash off ball activity. It's why their three point attempts are down. Can't get out shot from free by this Cavs team. Richard White <laughs> DMs me that tweet and says the timeline demanded it basically like all oh, the timelines getting their witch no threes and we just had like a back and forth like p- people take threes and they make it into this like I, all the responses i got to that tweet were it's not a bad thing they're shooting 60 percent from the field and they're winning like that's a good thing and, and someone else said um 
I'm not sure why it's the bad thing we're taking less threes. We're shooting 60% and won the game uh, and one game three. I'd say we should be shooting more, but if it's working, not going to go against it. And then another one, it's not the offense that's the problem tonight. They're allowing the Cavs to take 25 threes in a single half. That's a defensive <laughs> issue. And I agree that, but like, it's not Celtics won game three and will win game four. This is not a bad trend. This is playoff basketball. Someone tell Missoula to pipe down and watch Jason Tatum play ball. Buddy, that is not what needs to happen. They, I never want to. I never want that. I never want to watch Jason Tatum <laughs> exactly. play ball on his own. I want to see Jason Tatum use Jason, quote unquote, Jason Tatum playing ball and move it into a drive and kick three like he did with Jalen Brown. I want to see Jalen yes. Brown use his aggressiveness and kick it out to Al Horford. Al Horford, who's struggling. But like they can get open threes that way. And it feels like if they're working a little harder, they can get there. That said, credit them for their aggressiveness and the way that they were able to get to the free throw line so many times and overcome the fact that the Cavs chased them off the three-point line. So it, it is a balance, but I just I really haven't liked the offense these last two games. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think the three-pointers are an important like little like level up that they get because they're getting the math boost, too. It really helps them be one of the top offenses. However, I was impressed in this game. Again, for stretches, there were, you know, the the five minute without a field goal stretch in the fourth quarter. That'll make you sweat. You don't love to see it, but there were great stretches in this game that they just forced the issue and they got to the line when things weren't going well. Like even during that five minute stretch, they did score a few times from the line. They got themselves to the stripe, got easy looks and actually made them Jalen seven of nine, big boy game from him at the free throw line shout out. And I think that's seven of seven after the first two. So even even more props to him. He's been pretty decent in these spots in the playoffs. Um, but yeah, it's different watching them play this way. But I'm happy to see that they're able to win despite that. I agree with you that it is important to win the math battle. And the way they've won games all season has been through the math battle. And they've also won games this season defense first. And in the first half, you saw a ton of that. They got stops. At the beginning of the game, Cleveland was turning the ball over just as much as the Celtics were, and the Celtics got out, ran, and made them pay. So if they can get going on defense, I trust the offense will fall into place regardless of the threes. But if all else fails, you do hope to have the math advantage in your back pocket. Absolutely. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch all the winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1000 with basketball, hockey, college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. One of our favorite picks here at the How About Them Celtics podcast is the Drew Holiday blocks. It's usually 0.5. He just needs more than 0.5 blocks. That means one Drew Holiday block. And that pick is in the bag. Prize picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. You want to talk about math. So the Celtics have only had 15 games this season, playoffs and regular season combined, where they've taken 38 or fewer threes. They are five and ten in those games. Yep. F- five and ten in those games, not including tonight. That means of the what 17, 18 games they've lost this season, ten of them was when they took thirty eight or fewer shots, and the Celtics took thirty eight or fewer shots tonight and won the fucking game. So I, I think that's something. The, uh, they only have done that one other time this playoffs, and it was game. I don't know which game against Miami this was. That was game four against Miami. They only made 36 shots, but the Heat only made 35, and so they, they won. But the Cavs made more shots than the Celtics in this game. They made three more shots, and they made three more threes. That is a what? They had a nine-point nine advantage on field goals alone, and the Celtics mm-hmm. overcame it with free throws and aggressiveness. And so credit to them for that. Credit to them for the second-chance opportunities. Credit to Tatum for being aggressive and making plays in big spots, like you mentioned. Credit to Jalen Brown for using his aggressiveness, making his threes as well. Um, we do, I, I feel like I, I, I'm saying the same shit over and over again. Can we please play Tillman? 
Like, it, 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 I don't get it. I don't get it. It doesn't make you any sense. That's all we've talked game? about up here. I don't give a fuck what game it is. Just please, God, give this man Al Horford some rest. He's okay. Just not, he can't do it. He I was can't just saying, do it right Cornette now. Cornette was awesome. Like, Cornette had best guy on the floor stretches in this game to me. Even though somehow he was a yeah. minus four, he was awesome in the first half. He was all over the offensive glass. He was converting putbacks. He he had uh, very, very consistent looks underneath. Where did he finish the game? Four or five, yeah. He just looked dominant at times. Evan Mobley didn't have an answer for him. He had a couple of good contests on Mobley, too. Like, I was excited watching Cornette play today. I was like, at a crossroads. I was like, is this the Cornette overtaking of Horford? Yeah, Cornette was really good. Like you said, Can't believe and- it took us 14 minutes to talk <laughs> about this man. He was a, a unit. Yeah. Dude, he I, I tweeted it, and he, Kari's sitting next to me, so he'll hear me when I say this. I tweeted about Luke Cornette. Uh, bodying Evan Mobley in the paint for a rebound and I just said it looks like Kari guarding me <laughs> the other day. <laughs> it. Uh, but it did, dude. Luke Cornette soared up for that rebound and made Evan Mobley look like a fucking third grader. Cornette was he awesome did. in this game. He deserves a ton of respect for the way he played. And this is like me saying play Tillman isn't saying don't play Cornette more. Play Cornette more. I'm fine if you give Cornette more minutes. Yeah. And for what it's worth, Horford did only end up playing 28 in this game largely in, in thanks to Cornette. So that is a good thing. But man, Horford just... He's a step slow everywhere, man. He he doesn't have his touch. He, he's Big getting cooked. It, it, I know. He he had a huge block. Even the refs he, didn't he had a challenge, but um, he just it's it's it, it's not fun to watch, man. We love Al here, and it's I know you love Al. I know our, our everyone loves Al. You need it. You need him back. I, I don't doubt that I'll be back. It's just it's it's frustrating to see him struggling out there because you, you know what he's capable of, and and he's it's the Cavs are kind of picking on him. Al Horford, over ten in game three and four. Celtics two and zero. So they they were able to survive it, which is True. positive. And hopefully they close it out in five. And by the time the next series rolls around, he's rested slash Porzingis is back. Yeah, you sent me something. So <clears throat> we're going to watch this video. I need to say something first. I accidentally left the video playing in another tab while I came back to talk here, and I thought I had tinnitus because it's just like this. There's a whirring sound. Like I'm just here. I'm, I'm like sitting here. If you notice, oh, is that what you were this. doing with that? Yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was what like, am I listening? I was like, to? what the fuck is going on over there? <laughs> but, is he got his ears ringing from their in arena production? Yeah, dude. But this game, I don't want to say ref show. <sighs> this game, the were... officials are making their presence known. Tweet absolutely. It didn't. It didn't matter because. I don't think it like, I mean, Cavs fans are going to say it weighed in the Celtics favor, but I think it was just a product of the Celtics aggressiveness and the Cavs three point shots. Um, but this happened, Tyler Ford. Um, so Jalen Brown, this is from Brian Rob. Yeah. Uh, no, no, he not, he's not the guy that kicked him out. No, that was, was Evan, Evan, Evan something. Yeah. He's My an man. Asian guy. He's an Asian um, man. I know his name's Evan yeah, something. Uh, now I want to know NBA ref Evan <laughs> Evan Scott. <laughs> um, Tyler Ford though. I, it's sad that I knew that offhand. Uh, Jalen Brown got very fired up after having to clear out referee Tyler Ford before his clutch three with 109 left in the fourth quarter. And Brown talked about this post game. Uh, he literally said, "Let me find this and see if it's it's transcribed yet." But he wanted a whole thing about it. Like he he was asked like three questions about this and like kept going and going and going about it but the snippet brian rob shout out brian rob put in the, the tweet was i was telling him to get his ass out the way um but here's the clip of, of what happened and what jalen did um to, to quote get his ass out of the way right here uh <laughs> in jalen's defense no if just, you if you let it just, keep going you see him say it <laughs> wait does he say it on the way back yeah after Tatum slaps the shit out of him. <laughs> Get your ass out of the way. Get your ass out of the way. <laughs> For I uh Jalen talked about that after the game too. Um, J- Jason hitting him, and he goes, oh, yeah, I'm going to get him back for that. Mm. <laughs> and Jason just beat the shit out of him in game five. Yeah. <laughs> Jason said, um, Jason said, uh, yeah, I didn't realize how hard I hit him. I guess I've been hitting the weight room too much. <laughs> So that was a, a fun interaction. But yeah, no, Jalen was fired up after you. He name dropped him too. He goes, that referee, Tyler, he's just fucking in the way. I said, get your ass out the way. That's a heater. It was very funny. Um, I, I'm writing about the offense after the game. 
and so I asked Joe and Jalen, or excuse me, Joe and Jason about basically like how have you liked the aggressiveness with the Cavs basically running you guys off the three point line? Um, and they gave very similar responses and you could probably fucking write it with AI, but I'll read it anyways, just cause it's my angle. And this is, I guess my podcast, but um, <clears throat> Joe said, let me see. I got to find it. God damn it. Uh, sorry. <laughs> this is scrolling to do over there. <laughs> I know. I know. I know this is bad podcasting by me. Uh, oh yeah. Joe said again, it's never really been about the three point shot. It's been about taking the best shot. And regardless of that, we've been fighting to take really good shots. And that's the most important thing. And so, again, AI answer. But Jason Tatum, um, uh, that's not transcribed yet. But Jason Tatum was basically like um, the same thing. He just he just said the same shit as Joe. He's like, yeah, we're fighting for the best thing we can get. Credit to them, their defense, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I do think it is, I don't know the word for it, not disappointing, but like jarring to see how easily – the Cavs defense has shaken them from their offensive identity. Like they've played the same way the whole year. I don't, I don't think it's going to be hugely impactful moving forward one, because I think they will just naturally figure it out and and learn and and adapt. And two, two, because they fucking won the game anyway. So they did find a way around it and it was okay. Um, And also three, if Porzingis comes back, I think that will drastically change things. Um, And they just missed a bunch of shots, but I I don't know. it, It was, I don't like that they only took 30, 32 threes tonight. Like, like that, that is that, that's a like half the reason why they lost game two against the Heat because they got outshot from three and they didn't do that this time. But I, I, I'm not a fan of how this offense has been going. It just felt like a lot, a lot of ISO and mismatch hunting uh, overly. So I, I will say they improved on the one screen and will rock from there from game three. That, that was frustrating to watch. Um, but it just did feel like they, they settled too much. Uh, at times in this game, even though it felt like in game three, it was a lot of settling for the middies and bad step backs. And this one, it was, we're going to drive and, and it would just be selling for mismatch, but they ended up driving on it. And I think that's how they capitalized it more. So, which is a good thing. If you ask me, that's how they should definitely attack mismatches. Like if you're going to do the mismatch hunting, that's how you do it. Attack. Because the whole point of attacking a mismatch is to put pressure on the defense. You're not putting pressure on the defense if you're taking fall away mid-range shots. Now, at the beginning of the fourth quarter, Tatum took a couple, made a couple, and he made his presence felt, and it was good. Then it opened it up for the drive, and things got going for the rest of the guys. I believe Holiday was the beneficiary of a couple driving kicks, at least at the beginning. And, uh, you know, as the quarter went on, they they ended up getting the dagger from a nice little driving kick from Tatum, attacking a mismatch off a pick from... I think Derek White came up and set the pick and gave him Garland and then Jalen was open. But the point is you got the small guy on you go inside. That's the whole point that that's why you're attacking Garland. It's not so you can shoot over the top of him as pretty as it looks. It's to force the issue. And as ugly as it was at times, I think they did the best job that we've seen them do of it so far. Yeah, I guess that's the one positive from tonight about the offense, but just like, do that and use it to create threes. And, and I, I again, like I said at the top, I think a big part of it is the Cavs are just living with the one-on-one drives and staying home on the three-point shooters. And so there is that mix. But I think they're forcing the Celtics to play a low-scoring offense style. Um, and the Celtics just need to respond with good defense, which we can talk about that too. Like Joe was asked about it after the game, like how they performed in clutch time. And he said, I thought everyone talks about clutch offense, but I thought our clutch defense was great. And I do think they did a better job of their clutch defense. Um, but like you said at the start of the show, it felt like there were stretches in this game where they played great lockdown defense, and then there were stretches in this game where they just fucking melted into the floor and let the Cavs do whatever they wanted. And so it, it was frustrating to see both of those, and I think the drop defense got torched a little bit too much again. I thought their transition defense was pretty bad again, um, which was a trend from games too, uh, especially when they lost. Yeah, But I don't know. It, it was It was a mixed bag. One thing I'll say about the offense, and then we can wrap or talk about something else. So you mentioned the shot differential. 94 for Cleveland, 78 for Boston. Differential of three made shots, three made threes as well. But then you get a little, let's see. Let's say that they made up 12 shots from the free throw line because they took 24 free throws. 
So then they're only four shots behind Cleveland. And they won the battle on the glass big time. They out-rebounded them by 16 points. The turnovers were the big culprit today. So if they... I think that the Celtics can play the offense that you saw today and it shouldn't be a problem as long as they tighten things up. I I don't think what you saw today should be the standard, but I think they're making progress. This is what we've been talking about for a while, or at least me screaming to the heavens saying when the threes aren't falling, there needs to be something else that they can turn to. I don't think they need to abandon the threes. I think the threes are great. I think the threes played a huge role in how they played in, dominated the regular season but to see them be able to win a game tonight despite going without a field goal for five minutes in the fourth quarter they built a 15 point lead early on in that quarter through the offense that they played in this game it's not a bad thing this is like a learning process and you know missoula and the boys are going to learn from it because that's been their mantra all year is to grow and move from game to game so this is a nice thing for them to keep in their back pocket. It's the it's the slider in the pitch mix instead of just the fastball at the end of the games. I think I think we saw something good today even if it wasn't pretty. Hey gang, let me tell you a little something about game time. The NBA playoffs have arrived. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Who doesn't want to get in on the fun? With game time, you can experience it with your own eyes. Get yourself Great seats to games with even greater prices. That's right. You can save when getting your tickets with Game Time. It's an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which makes getting those playoff tickets even faster and easier. Plus, the prices on Game Time usually go down the closer it gets to tip off. Who doesn't love to save a little bit of money? I certainly do. I used Game Time back in March when I took the lady to a game. We went to see the Celtics play our Pistons. And it was great. I could look and see what the seat view would be just using the app. Didn't have to be surprised when I showed up. Plus, you do get those last minute deals. They have the flash deals and zone deals. Zone deals, which you can choose a section of the arena and let game time choose those seats. You'll save a little bit of money that way. You can download the game time app, create an account and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Again, that's code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I just, I don't like, it's twofold for me because I don't like how easily they were thrown off their best offense, but I also like how they were able to adapt and win in a different way. I just worry that this, number of free throws this efficiency from the field um isn't sustainable because they made a lot of tough shots tonight like they made a lot of tough shots inside they made a lot of tough middies like the ones tatum made like i mentioned um i think on the flip side horford will start making shots again like that math will even out um we didn't even talk about it Derek white is just like non-existent now um, he's doing what he can. I, the Cavs look like, it, it, ironically, Richard White messaged me about it. That his take, quote, offense changed, impact shooters like Sam and Derek. Easy to see why their percentages drop. Plus, Cavs not giving Derek looks. Ball went to Allen. They never rotated. Live with the Al jumper. Like, it does feel like they are taking the three-point line. And because of that, like Mr. White mentioned, uh, Derek White's not going to be as effective. Um, Listen. I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird. If you're going to get 27 combined from Drew and Peyton Pritchard, I'll live with one of six from Derek White. (laughs) Derek White, by the way, whose one make was a big one. Made a three when the Celtics were kind of reeling. So shout out to him for stepping up in the big moment. Um, Yeah, I mean, I I see what you mean with with the maybe the shot making isn't sustainable. But if you force the issue like this the way they did, you will get foul calls. Or you should. There, there that's, is the danger that's, of, that's oh palms up. We didn't get the call, and then they don't get back, and it unravels. But y- your concern about the getting thrown off the initial game plan—that's what teams are going to do to them up until the finals. Miami did it in the game two that the Celtics lost. Even though Miami shot the lights out, you did see a lot more mismatch hunting. If you go back, like that's what we talked about after the game, and uh, game two in this one, it felt like it was more of just Cleveland bringing the heat. But this, the Celtics adjusted and they managed to win. So it's, it's not the worst. It's not, you don't want, this should not be the primary attack, 
but it's good that they have it. It's a good thing, I think, in the end. It's I, I you know how you say you can't rely on the officials? You can't rely on the officials. Like I, I get that aggressiveness will bring foul calls, but I wish you could work for better shot quality in general. That's my only gripe. Um, sure. There were stretches and, where my dad and I were like, everything's tough. This has been Noah's biggest thing too. She's like talked about it with like a lot while we've been on the trip. Drop defense. She fucking hates it. I see like the value a little bit. It's getting torched. It, it's it's getting torched. And the Celtics have done a good job of playing over the screens and contesting from behind, especially like they did in Miami a lot. Pitt Pritchard did a good job on Hero, but <sighs> it's given them a lot of space to work with. And I'll, I'll say this: Jalen Brunson's gonna fucking murder drop defense if they get there. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, come on. If they get there. But Halliburton also will, for what it's worth. That's what I said. Yeah, yeah. Either team. I don't know, man. I would love it to be Halliburton. I, I really don't want to go to India. <laughs> no, I, I hear you. I hear you. At least it won't be the most That's expensive sad. place to go. I know, but I would save on flights if it's New York because I could drive. You could take the train, too. Yeah, I think we would take the train. I would talk yeah. about that. I will say though, I said I didn't want to come to Cleveland. Cleveland's kind of nice. I had a good time in Cleveland. It's like a nice. This, like this city's pickup. cool. Uh, we did play pickup. We played pickup ball. Me, we got all us. Everyone out there, nine of us. It was me, Kari, Bobby, Kravitsky, and Bobby Manning, Justin Turpin, uh, Kari Thompson, Noah Dalzell, John Corrales, Richie LeMay, who was CLNS's photography guy, and Joe Sway. Yeah. Pavone. Did I get everybody? I think I hit everybody. We Getting played pickup. We played four and four half court. Um, is very small court, so like there was no corner three. Like it, 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 it was very tracks. close. Yes, it was a health tracks court. Yeah, um, it sucked because we're playing four and four, and there's no spacing. And we played half court because there's somebody on the other half of the court. Yeah, so it was just all packed. Um, I guarded Corrales for the first couple games. I played him pretty well, I thought. Uh, and then Kari beat my ass. Uh. It happens, man. He's he's fucking huge. It got to the point where, so they're like, <clears throat> I'm down low trying to like fight for positioning with Kari, and they are up at the top, like not even checking the ball, and they're like, "What's the score? Is it this?" And I just scream, "I'm like, hey, figure it out! I'm dying!" Because Kari's just like shut. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like God, fucking damn, it. pick something. Uh, but it was good. I, I hit it. I hit a couple good ones. I got past Kari one. He gave me a little shove, and I finished anyways. With respect. Mm. Uh, there was he's another one there. where, yeah, he's there, but he's got his headphones on. There's another one where I um. Okay. I, uh, that ass. I am talking. <laughs> he just goes talking about how I whooped. Can you hear him? Can you yeah. hear him? <laughs> but there was another one where I, um, I had the ball. Somebody set a screen for me, and Noah tried to like pick up on it, but I like spun, moved past her, euro stepped past Corrales, and finished. I should have quit there. I was you're like, good on the drive. I truly think you're pretty good on the drive. I'm just out of shape. And <laughs> slow. You gotta start uh, going and the, for walks. Change your I life. Know. You go out for a walk, put on a podcast, they'll like make your day. I've been doing it. Ooh, I know. My problem is um I was fucking exhausted. So like the last game, I lost every game, first of all. It was bad yeah. showing. It's tough. I first three games I was with some combination of Kari, Richie, uh, Josue and Bobby. We like we kept losing, so we would kept shooting to see who stays on and who's off. Um me and Richie's pick and roll was elite, by the way. Shout out Richie. Like, we were kill- kicking ass. Um, I was like Draymond to his Steph. Um, I was talking to Noah today. She goes, one half of my body hurts because you and Kari just kept fucking screaming. Me. Um, but we lost those games, and I was guarding Corrales in those games. Um, and we just we lost. We couldn't score, whatever. And then Corrales left. And so I jumped in with... Bobby Kravitsky, Noah, and Justin, who are on Cross's team, and I had to guard Kari, and then he just kicked my ass. Uh, and the, that was so I lost every game. We even played two on two. It was me and Turpin versus Bobby and Noah, and we lost those two. So I literally oh, did not oh. win. I literally did not win a single fucking game. I will say, Turp, Justin, shooter, motherfucker, How did you lose that. <sighs> Noah, brother, just shots. post up. Nah, Bobby's a strong motherfucker, dude. He, <laughs> Lou Dort. Yeah, That's yeah. <laughs> he, he, I couldn't. Uh, I, I tried, but I we spent the whole podcast 
criticizing drop defense, but I had to drop to cover Bobby on the roll. And as soon as Justin got screened, Noah just did a fucking step back and made everything, which is annoying. It was a rough. It was fun. I had a good time. This is me complaining, but I I can't wait to play you guys. Beat my ass. I was awful was in the men's league game yesterday. So yeah, you guys lost. I heard fucking bums. Yeah, we lost. We had five people. Four of us played bad. Not winning formula. <clears throat> also, insider uh, insight on how about them Celtics? ESPN just records on their phones. Like I see Tim Bontemps right now on the court. It's just him, a tripod, and his phone. Recording. Mm. <laughs> so if he can do it, anybody can do it. Shout MMJ out MMJ Tim Bontemps. Respect. MMJ multi mul- multimedia. Yes. Yeah. Somebody said that earlier today too, and I said, had the same reaction. Like what? But then I I figured it out. Um, if we miss anything else, this isn't gonna be a full pot, unfortunately. But uh, I think we we got most. Bing bong, two two. Uh, Bing bong, Wolves Nuggets Nuggets not dead. Two two. Yep. And Mavs Thunder. What's the like score? The Mavs are gonna go up three to one. At least when mm. I was watching, they're up nine in the third quarter. They're at home. Damn. <clears throat> oh, Celtics undefeated on the road now. Yep. Maybe be better at home. You're welcome. I did it for you. Win, win at home. I'm not complaining about the road. I'm not taking it for granted. I, when the summer rolls around, I just want to watch fucking home game highlights, please. That's, that's really what I want. I want to be able to watch a good game at the Garden. That's what I want. Uh, all right. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Make sure to leave a like. Let us know your thoughts. Email us at hbtcpod.gmail.com. Um, and go check out First the Floor Late Night. Go watch the replay. Sam's going to jump on after this. I'll Shut up. There. I'll let you wrap it up. Yeah, thank you very much for listening and watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel with the notification bell so you don't miss any of our daily uploads. We're coming at you with something new. 5 a.m. We're here for you. Whether it's game recaps or the full pods, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sundays, this one is not full because Jack's got the restrictions on the laptop over there. But usually, we got you with an hour plus of content. We also have other videos in between and we have live streams talking seeds typically monday wednesday friday mornings it gets a little shaky with the shoot around schedules here in the playoffs but we'll try and put something together for you Celtics the round table should be live tuesdays around six not sure about tomorrow because the gang will be driving back so i'm not sure if you guys will be back for then but i mean yeah. i guess we we could go on later or whatever uh we're probably uh yeah it'll just depend on where we're back we, we can play depends when you guys get back we'll be together so we can figure it out yeah and uh, pregame, half hour before, we had an excellent pregame today. Set the tone. Set the tone. We're on Spotify and Apple, too. If you follow us there, you're going to get the full pods and game recaps right into your feed. Uh, leave a five-star review. We'd appreciate that very, very much. You can find us via email, hbtcpod at gmail.com. You know you got something to say. You know you got something to say today. So, so reach out. Whether it's the game or rat list, we want to hear from you guys. You can find us on socials at How About Them Seas, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, just to name the pod. Our streams are there. They're on YouTube and they're on Twitter. Jack's Twitter is Jack's Money NBA. Mine is at Sam LaFrance NBA. It's at Pros. Jack Jacko, come on. Jacko's Jacko. Jacko.